it seems to me that it is a minority that ever gets the true and full gospel in any denomination. Most of us just keep worshipping Jesus and arguing over the right way to do it. The amazing thing is that Jesus never once says, worship me, whereas he frequently says, follow me. Christianity is a lifestyle, a way of being in the world that is simple, non-violent, shared and loving. However, we make it into an established religion and all that goes with that and avoid the lifestyle of change itself. We could be warlike, greedy, racist, selfish and vain throughout most of Christian history and still believe that Jesus is our personal Lord and Saviour or continue in good standing to receive the sacraments. The world has no time for such silliness anymore. The suffering on earth is great. Heal in God, reach out to us now and make us well. Heal our hearts and the hearts we have hurt by our selfishness and neglect. Through the gift of your Spirit, awaken us to the new life you offer, rooted in your compassion, justice and love, so that we may become instruments of your healing goodness. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Those at the edge of any system, and those excluded from any system, ironically and invariably, hold the secret for the conversion and wholeness of that very group. They always hold the feared, rejected and denied parts of the group's soul. We see therefore why the Church was meant to be that group that constantly went to the edges, to the least of the brothers and sisters and even to the enemy. Jesus was not just a theological genius, he was also a psychological and sociological genius. Therefore, when any church defines itself by the exclusion of anybody, it is always wrong. It is avoiding its only vocation, which is to be the Christ. The only groups that Jesus seriously critiques are those who include themselves and exclude others from the always given grace of God. Only as the people of God receive the stranger, the sinner and the immigrant, those who don't play our game our way, do we discover not only the hidden, feared and hated parts of our own souls, but also the fullness of Jesus himself. We need them for our own conversion. The church is always converted when the outcasts are re-invited back into the temple. We see this in Jesus' common action of sending marginalised people that he had healed back into the village, back to the family, back to the temple to show themselves to the priests. It is not just for their re-inclusion and acceptance, but actually for the group itself to be renewed. Spirit of the risen Christ, you draw us into new patterns of relationship and care. You help us to rebuild our broken communities through your generous and inclusive love. Help us now to open our hearts and our lives to find new and inclusive ways to belong together within the promise of God's kingdom. Jesus calls us to become like little children or as the Zen master puts it, to have a beginner's mind. Jesus says the only people who can recognise and be ready for what he's talking about are the ones who come with the mind and heart of a child. The older we get, the more we've been betrayed and hurt and disappointed, the more barriers we put up to the beginner's mind. We must always be ready to see anew, but it's so hard to go back, to be vulnerable, to continue to say to our soul, I don't know anything. A man told me recently that was the mantra that has kept him happy. Spirituality is always about how we see. It's not about earning or achieving some kind of merit, only when we see rightly. The rest follows and the road widens. We don't need to push the river because we are already in it, floating along. The great life is already living within us and we only gradually learn to know, to say yes, to this always existent life. This life is so large and deep and spacious that it even includes the opposite. 
Holy Spirit, go between God. You call us into community from every language and culture. Give us grace to build bridges of understanding, to reach across barriers of suspicion and fear. We know now from cultural studies and historical experience that groups define themselves and even hold themselves together largely negatively by who they are not, what they are against and what they do not do. We need a problem or an enemy to gather our energies. We usually define ourselves through various purity codes to separate ourselves from the impure and the presumably unworthy. Simple worship, what we are for or in support of and what we love, is much harder to sustain. Thus, most informations and revolutions need someone else to be wrong, much more than they need any discovery of a higher level of consciousness themselves. This is an absolutely core problem. Thus Jesus never affirmed opposition or contrariness because he knew that it was merely a same level or lower level response to the problem, even when empowered by some new and good ideas. The new group was infected by the same hubris and oppositional en energy and would soon engender the same kind of reformation. Thus the endless progressive conservative pendulum continues to swing and we do not yet move forward spiritually. Emerging Christianity is trying not to make this mistake and hopes to be an inclusive notion of religion that is not against this or that. Evil and sin do need to be named and exposed, not directly fought, however, and this is the prophetic role of religion. Without prophecy, religion cannot critique itself and ends up being largely self-serving. Jesus' starting point was never sin but human suffering. This deeper and increasingly obvious teaching of Jesus is strongly re-emerging in our time from many different disciplines of wisdom and study. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Remember, always remember, that the heartfelt desire to do the will of God is in fact the truest will of God. At that point, God has won, the ego has lost, and your prayer has already been answered. To sum up the importance of an alternative mind, this message says it all. Watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. God of presence, with us here and now through your abiding spirit, open our minds to learn from the times we are living through. May the hard lessons of these days teach us how to prepare for a better tomorrow in which the peoples of the earth share their gifts for the well-being of all. Take away our fear of the future and give us courage to rebuild our world as the temple of your presence. Historically, mysticism was often seen as the opposite of prophecy. There was the prophetic strain, which was working for social justice, making a difference, solving problems, fixing the world, and bringing about the reign of God. Then there were those other mystifying people who locked themselves in hermitages and monasteries and didn't care much about the suffering of the world. This would be the priestly strain of theology. Now we know that there was a radical misunderstanding of both sides. When we, need, when we read the prophets, we see that, without exception, they talk about an intimate and loving relationship with God that led to radical social critique. Jeremiah talks about a love that seduced me and that let me be seduced. The normal language of the prophets Amos and Hosea is an intimate language of divine encounter that always overspills into social concerns. They blast a common understanding of Judaism and temple worship, which puts them into direct conflict with the priestly class. It seems to lead to the murdering of the prophets, according to Jesus. 
In the Jewish scriptures, the priests are invariably competing with the prophets and the prophets are critiquing the priests. And this tells me it must be a necessary and creative tension. Maybe both sides get refined because of it. Today, however, we have mostly priestly concerns, or as Jeremiah put it, the sanctuary, the sanctuary, the sanctuary, and little concern for immigrants, health care for the poor, earth care, or even minimal peacemaking. The patterns never seem to change since the priests control the home front and the prophets invariably work at the edges. Healing God, reach out to us now and make us well. Heal our hearts and the hearts we have hurt by our selfishness and neglect. Through the gift of your Spirit, awaken us to new life you offer, rooted in your compassion, justice and love, so that we may become instruments of your healing goodness. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about becoming spiritual beings nearly as much as it is about becoming human beings. The biblical revelation is clearly saying that we are already spiritual beings, we just don't know it. The Bible tries to let us in on the secret by revealing God in ordinary times and places. That's why so much of the text seems so mundane, practical, specific and frankly unspiritual. It's not usually inspiring, but instead filled with prostitution, adultery, murder, polygamy, gang rape, and frankly, a lot of contradictions, just like everything else, just like life and just like me. We've created a sad kind of dualism between the spiritual and the so-called non-spiritual. We just couldn't see God's new unity of dare to believe it until God put them together in one human body called Jesus. As many have said much better than I, we are not human beings trying desperately to become spiritual. We are already and essentially spiritual beings, and our problem has always been, what does it mean to be a human being? I suspect that is why God had to model the answer in at least one human being called Jesus. Healing God, reach out to us now and make us well. Heal our hearts and the hearts we have hurt by our selfishness and neglect. Through the gift of your Spirit, awaken us to new life that you offer, rooted in your compassion, justice and love, so that we may become instruments of your healing goodness. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank mm -hmm. you.